Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we're going to do tutorial discussion for chapter 10, focusing on the subtopic of 10.1 introduction, 10.2 nomenclature, and 10.3 physical properties of the carboxyl acid. So now we're going to focus on the tutorial question 1, tutorial question 2, 3, and 4 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 1, we have to give the IUPAC name for each of the following carboxyl acid. So for A, we have CH3, CH2 bracket 5, CO2H. So if you were to expand this structure here, what you're going to get is CH3, CH2, 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 CH2 and then C double bond O, OH. So it basically means that the CH2 is repeated with 5 times. Okay, so that is why when they write the condensed structure, they're just going to say it's CH2 bracket 5. And then CO2H is basically means COOH. Okay, so yeah, just ensure that you know how to expand that. Okay, so when you get the structure here, so you need to count the number of carbons. So the number of carbon here going to start with this one, which is carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so you know that it is a heptanoic acid. Okay, and then for the carbon, eh, for the structure C here, so you have a cyclohexane and then it is attached with a carboxylic acid group here, carboxylic ion. Okay, so um, what you're going to do is is the name the cyclic compound first which is you know that it is a cyclohexane because it has six carbon and then straight away put the carboxylate acid name so we're going to have the name of cyclohexane carboxylic acid okay as simple as that okay do not write okay so one of the mistakes that people are making is to write it as cyclohexanoic acid so this one is wrong okay so you just you just put the name of the cyclic alkene and then carboxyl acid and then for the structure d here um you need we need to find the longest carbon chain first and the numbering should start from the carbon that is attached with the carboxyl carboxyl group okay so number one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this is your longest carbon chain. So you know that it is an octanoic acid. And then at carbon number 6, it is attached with a phenyl group. Okay. So it's going to be 6-phenyl octanoic acid. Okay, so here is a phenyl group. Benzyl is like this, where it has another extra carbon chain. Phenyl is C6H5. Okay. Now we move on to the tutorial question 2, where we have to draw the structural formula for each of the following compound. So we have a 2-hydroxy, 2-phenyl ethanoic acid. So ethanoic acid is going to be our parent name. So we have C, C double bond O, OH. Okay, so we know that this is going to be our ethanoic acid. And then at carbon number, at carbon number 2, this one number 1, and this one is number 2. At, number, at carbon number 2, it's going to attach with hydroxy and also phenyl. So we can attach it with hydroxy group, OH. And then phenyl is going to have a benzene ring here. And then the other one is hydrogen. Okay, so it's going to be 2 hydroxy, 2 phenyl, ethanoic acid. Okay, so you can draw it in terms of the expanded structure here or skeleton structure, or you can put it in terms of this way. Okay. Now, looking for the next structure here, which is 2 chlorobutandioic acid. So, di refers to 2 carboxyl group okay and it has four carbon 
So you know that you will have four carbon, which is one, two, three, and four. And then at, at each end of the carbon chain, we're going to attach it with a carboxyl group. Okay, so let's say if I number it, number one here, two, three, and four, so consistent. And then at carbon number two, it's going to be attached with chlorine. Okay, so it's going to be 2 chloro diweak acid. So you can draw it like this, and yeah, or you can draw it like this. Okay, just like uh, the pattern of zigzag is, is different, but then it is still the same answer. Okay, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, still the same. And then for uh, um, the next structure here, which is ortho hydroxy benzoic acid. So ortho here means 1, 2, hydroxy benzoic acid, okay? So it's basically a benzene ring and it has a carboxyl group, which is a benzoic acid. And then this one going to be numbered as 1, this carbon here. And then at carbon number 2, it has a OH group, which refers to the hydroxy, okay? So it's going to be octo hydroxy benzoic acid meta is 1 3 para is 1 4 so if they ask for meta or he should be here if they ask for para or he should be here okay yes so you can also draw it in terms of this way as long as it is number one or number two okay so doesn't matter which position that you put that in all right now for the tutorial question 3, we have to arrange the following compound in the order of increasing acidity and we have to explain the answer. So we have the ethanoic acid, phenol to chloroethanoic acid and also ethanol. So for acidity, the acid we're going to have uh, more, will have the higher acidity. So you know that um, 2 chloroethanoic acid will be a higher acid than ethanoic acid because of the presence of the electron withdrawing group, which is the chlorine. Okay, so 2 chloroethanoic acid is going to be a stronger acid than ethanoic acid, than ethanoic acid, then followed by the phenol and then ethanol. So ethanol is very unstable because of the formation of the ethoxide ion. Phenol, the delocalization of electron only happens in the uh, benzene ring. Meanwhile, for the both of the acid here, it happens at the two more electron negative atom. So we can uh, write our answer here as the two chloroethanoic acid will be more acidic than ethanoic acid and more acidic than phenol than ethanol. Okay, so you can say that the ethoxide ion it is very unstable or not stable because when the ethanol dissolve in water, they're going to produce an uh, ethoxide ion as well as the hydronium ion, okay? So the ethoxide ion here is very unstable, okay? One and two. Okay, so the ethoxide, uh, the alkyl group here, going to transfer electron density to the oxygen, making it more negative, more negative, and more negative, hence it is very unstable, okay? So when it is unstable, then it is less acidic, okay? And next, we're going to have the phenoxide ion. So for the phenoxide ion, the phenoxide is stabilized by the resonance effect where electron is delocalized inside the benzene ring. So when you have a phenol and when it is dissociated in water, it's going to form a phenoxide ion. So the negative charge or the electrons here can be transferred into the benzene ring and it will be continued in order to make electron delocalization inside the benzene ring. So it is very stable and hence the phenol is more acidic than the ethoxide ion. Meanwhile, for the ethanoid ion which come from the carboxyl, carboxyl acid, so you, you can say that the, the carboxyl ion is more stable than the phenoxide ion because the negative charge is delocalized over two electron negative oxygen atom. Okay, so if you were to draw the ethanoid ion, so this one is the ethanoid acid, when it dissolves in water, it's going to form the ethanoid ion. 
So the resonance structure can be formed when the negative charge is transferred into this carbon here to make this C, C single bond with oxygen to make double bond. And this double bond is going to break apart in order to make negative charge on the oxygen. So what you're going to get is CH3, CO- because it's being transferred, and then double bond here. Okay, so it will keep on uh, moving around for the electron stellarization. And hence, the ethanoid ion will be more acidic than phenoxide ion. Okay, meanwhile, for the 2 chloroethanoid acid, which comes from the this structure here, so when it's dissociated in water, they're going to form 2 chloroethanoid ion. Okay, so they're going to be a presence of the chlorine atom, which is the electron withdrawing group. And these will delocalize the negative charge even more. This stabilizes the carboxyl ion to the greater effect. Okay, so the idea of the electron delocalization is still the same. So negative charge up to here and goes to up here. Okay, so you can draw the resonant structure. Okay, so this chlorine will pull electron density towards themselves so that the negative charge can be reduced down and hence make it more stable. Okay, now for tutorial question 4, we have to arrange the following compound in the order of the increasing boiling point and we have to explain the answer. So we have the pentanal, so pentanal will have the aldehyde group, so it consists of 5 carbon which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and then the pentanal going to have the aldehyde group here. So for the butanoic acid, you're going to have 4 carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it have attached with a carboxyl group. And then pentane is a straight chain alkene, which is we're going to have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For one butanol, we're gonna have it one, two, three, four, and then OH group here. Okay, so these are the structure of the uh, compounds here. So we know that the most or the highest boiling point gonna be the butanoic acid because it can form a hydrogen bonded okay dimer, and then. The alcohol here, which is the butanol, can also form hydrogen bonding. So it can be a second highest. This one is the first highest. And then third gonna be um, the aldehyde here. Okay, because it have the have higher mass than the pentane. Okay. And for this one, it cannot form hydrogen bond okay because you know that when forming hydrogen bond the hydrogen must first attach with as what you learned in sem 1 with form f o n sorry f h o h n h okay so the hydrogen must first attach with either of these atoms then only they can form hydrogen bonding with another molecule. Okay, so for this one, the oxygen just attached by itself, does not have any hydrogen. So they cannot form hydrogen bonding. Okay, for hydrogen bonding, remember form HF and OH and NH. Then only they can form hydrogen bonding with another molecule. Okay, so a lot of you might make a mistake here that you thought that it can form hydrogen bonding but essentially they cannot form hydrogen bonding okay so now we have the idea so let's put it nicely into words okay um, so the answer here um, the butanoic acid as mentioned will have a higher boiling point followed by the butanol and then the pentanal and then the pentane. Okay, so let me wrap off this one first so that you can see it clearly.
Okay, so the Bhutan wing is seat, gonna have more, gonna have higher boiling point than butanol, and then pentanol, pentanol, and then pentit. Okay, so the Bhutan wing is seat and one butanol, as mentioned, will have higher boiling point compared to pentanol and pentin because they have the strong hydrogen bonds between their molecule, while pentanol and pentin only have weak van der Waal forces. Okay, so butanol and butanol acid, strong hydrogen bond, while pentanol, pentanol and pentane will have weak van der Waal forces between their molecule. So the butanol acid has the highest bonding point compared to one butanol because it can form a stable hydrogen bonded dimer. So the term here is very, very important. Hydrogen bonded dimer. So the structure here is going to be like this. So this is our butanoic acid. And when the two buta butanoic acids are close by together, they can form an intermolecular hydrogen bond between one another and almost sit it as a cyclic. So this term here is known as the hydrogen bonded dimer. Meanwhile, for the pentanol, they will have a higher boiling point compared to pentane because the pentanol has a bigger molecular size because it has extra oxygen. So oxygen is more heavy than hydrogen compared to pentane. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the oxygen will have a bigger molecular mass or size. Therefore, the pentanol will have higher or stronger than the one forces. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!